Okay. Good morning and welcome to this week's edition of Encompass Live. I am your host, Krista Burns, here at the Nebraska Library Commission. Uh, Encompass Live is the Commission's weekly online event. Yes, you can call us a webinar. Uh, where we cover anything that may be of interest to librarians. Um, we do these sessions live every Wednesday morning at 10 a.m. Central Time, um, but they are recorded, so if you're unable to join us on Wednesday mornings, that's fine. You can always go to our website and, and watch and listen to all of our recordings of all of our previous sessions that we have done. Um, and we do a mixture of things here on the show, presentations, mini training sessions, interviews. Uh, basically, if it's related to libraries, we'll put it on the show. We are um, not very picky in that way. <laughs> uh, we have commission staff that do sessions sometimes, our own Nebraska Library Commission staff sharing services and things that we do here. But we also do bring in um, guest speakers when, um, when we want to. So that's what we have this morning. We have officially three different staff people, and you'll see what I mean by that in a second, from um, the University of Nebraska um, Extension Office that are going to talk to us about the services and programs that they have there um, available to you. Um, first, well, I'm not sure who will be up first in talking, but um, Carol Larvik is on the line with us. Carol, can you say hi? Hello. And I know you have um, with you there... Angela Apps is oh. here. Mm -hmm. Good morning. Okay, good. And we have on video Dennis Call. Great. Okay. Um, so I will just um, hand over to you guys. You can uh, start your press, start your uh, talk. Um, and um, okay, there we go. I see your slides. Just switch to that. So you are good to go. Go ahead. Well, good morning. Um, we're here today to share about the University of Nebraska Lincoln Extension and some of the great resources that we have available to the public to help them in making decisions. The major focuses of UNL Extension and some ideas to how we have partnered with our local library to give you some ideas how you could partner with the University of Nebraska Extension in your own area. Uh, again, my name is Carol Larvik and I am an Extension Educator with the University of Nebraska Extension. And the picture should be coming up there so you can see what I look like. We have Angela with us today also, and she'll be talking uh, some a little later. And Dennis was not able to join us. He is out teaching a leadership class today, but he recorded uh, a few of the things that he wanted to talk about, so we'll be watching those in a little bit. When we first start out, the best thing, the best way to start out is to get an overall picture of extension and how it connects to people in each county. And so when we think about that, we want to think very broad and realize that there are extension offices in almost every state in the United States. And if you were to explain extension to someone not familiar with us, you might say that extension helps people understand and apply research. So somebody on campus does some research, and the picture that we have here is a scientist, but there's a lot of different kind of research that goes on. And then uh, we need to get it out to the people so that they understand how that research can better their lives. The land grant universities were established by Congress in 1862 and 1890 by the Morrill Acts. And then in 1914, the Smith-Lever Act included cooperative extension. And that's the red arrow, sending somebody from that university that has learned what happened in research out to the people to be able to have the people be able to use that research. So our mission in land-grant universities are to teach students uh, on campuses and off campuses to conduct research and then to extend that research to every community in the state. On a national level, uh, we've collaborated across many of the extension offices. And we put together a program we called e-extension because it uh, encompasses so many different organizations of extensions extension in so many different um, subject matter areas, and we put that all together so that if the University of Nebraska doesn't have the answer, we might be able to get it from a different university. 
And that website, you can see it up on your screen now of where we go to. And I've actually pulled up the screen that talks a little bit about some of the different things that are on the extension. Um, today we're going to focus, though, on the University of Nebraska. And we cover not only Nebraska, but across the world. But our focus is in Nebraska. So think back with me. Have you had an encounter with cooperative extension? Uh, in the University of Nebraska right now, we just call it extension, but it started out as cooperative extension with county agents. And when you think of extension, if you've had an experience with us in the past, is it like this picture of the county agent? Um, what do you think of when you see this picture? Well, I think of extension as a family affair. Notice the whole family is there. Families long ago may have looked like this. Families today may not look exactly like this. They may have a, a different um, number of kids, a different number of parents. They may not live on a farm. But when I think of extension, I think of the whole family learning. And in this case, they're learning together. And the extension agent in this picture is teaching by an example. He's showing how to judge that dairy calf. The young girl that is holding the calf is not only learning about the calf, but if you'll notice tucked underneath her arm is a record book. She's learning about keeping records. Um, also, there's diversity in this picture. You notice that each child in this picture has something different they're going to bring to the county agent to learn about. Well, one has the calf, another one that looks like a rabbit, and the third child has what looks like maybe something that she sewed or some kind of piece of clothing. Today, extension still includes cows, rabbits, clothing, families. But we don't ride around in the 1953 Chevy pickup that this agent probably came to this farm in. Today, we use computers, smartphones, and the tools of today to teach about the topics of today. So let's take a look at how you can know the current topics that UNL Extension is working on and how it can help you in your library. Um, you can see here in this slide that we may teach by different modes. We may build community uh, and teaching and learning using technology. We try to be research-based and um, um, current to what's going on in society, and we look at learning experiences to accomplish intended outcomes. We know that learning is a process, not just an event. So in the next segment, uh, we're going to share with you some highlights of each of what we call action team focus areas. Um, we also will have a printable PDF that uh, we'll share with you. Uh, that has a handout to a lot of the resources linked on there. It's got the main links of the websites that we'll visit that will you'll be able to then go easily and find what you're looking for. You may want to have those available. Uh, you can uh, link them on your website, or you just may want to have that available so when somebody would ask you a question, you could go to there easily. As we said earlier, Dennis is not able to be with us today. He's teaching a leadership class. But he did uh, record a session talking about many of the focus areas of UNL Extension. His segment is about 10 minutes long. And now is the time that we'll look at that segment. OK. Great. Thanks, Carol. Um, I just want to let everyone know, too, yes, um, before I get the video going, you were mentioning the um, the PDF handout. Um, I have that. So as some of you know, when we're um, done with this, I'll post that up on the recording page along with the recording of the show. And all the links that are on it and th some things that I know, Carol, you already showed one page there. Um, will also be put into the Commission's uh, Delicious account. I've been working on that this morning already since I had the PDF. <laughs> um, so you have access to all of those web pages and anything that's been mentioned as well. So hold on just a sec here. I'm going to switch over to myself and um, uh, 
All right, you should be seeing the video. I haven't started it yet. Can you see it there, Carol? Yes. Okay, great. All right, hold on a sec. I'll start his video. So as we look at the action team focus areas, start to think of ways that you might partner with Extension in the future with resources and educational programs for youth and adults, or how you might reach additional people with online digital tools. Here you're going to see the six key focus groups, the action focus groups that the University of Nebraska Extension addresses. We're going to briefly explain the key education and information focus of each group and provide a wide range of information that can reach a lot of different types of clientele. Beef production is one of the largest industries in Nebraska. University of Nebraska Research has provided cattle feeders and cow-calf producers with the research necessary to keep the beef industry strong. With the following few glimpses of beef websites, we're able to access the key beef.unl.edu information to help people find good, solid research-based data. At beef.unl.edu, cattle feeders and producers are able to find the information they need to make those economical decisions. As you can see by the sidebar on the left, UNL Extension provides cattle producers with research-based information on caring for their cattle, preparing quality feed, budgeting, and much more. Last year's drought created new issues for producers. Immediately, UNL Extension was ready with lots of drought information. Resources to help producers design a drought management plan and ideas to consider before and during a drought was great. The National Drought Monitor at the top is a national wide resource that is headquartered in Nebraska. In the lower right bottom of the screen, producers can click on the drought resources graphic that will take them to lots of information to help with drought decisions, such as culling cows, reducing feed costs, etc. The interactive call-in with phone and or use chat room type webinars uh, can be viewed live or participants can view archived webinars. In addition to that, there are some beef short courses and other courses and programs that are also available to producers. Timely topics for producers are also uh, important and they encourage uh, people to subscribe to newsletters to keep them up to date with the latest information, which this time of year, there tends to be a lot. Online learning opportunities are also available for producers. There are several mobile apps for producers to use with cattle. Mobile apps allow producers to have the app on their phone to record data or find answers. This area uh, in the uh, beef reports has a summary of the research conducted by scientists and graduate students in UNL Animal Science Department. Another focus area is water and environment. It includes several program areas including acreage, lawn, and landscape, as well as water. You can see some of the highlighted programs on this website. The website environment.unl.edu focuses on education and outreach on sustainable landscapes for the environment, economics, energy and emotions, which are social benefits. Last year's emphasis on drought mitigation helped prepare landscapers and homeowners for planting and preparing and protecting their plants through the drought. Backyard Farmer is the second longest running TV show and it's part of the acreage and landscape program. Have weekly TV broadcasts of Backyard Farmer as well as horticulture updates for lawns, trees, shrubs, landscapes, fruits, vegetables, and more. Um, you get a monthly to-do calendar of things to do in the garden as well as on the lawn and lots of videos on horticulture topics. They even have some apps for iPhone and iPad and Androids right now. Turfgrass, turf.unl.edu is also a great science. Uh, provides turf information for consumers and professionals. It's updated often during the growing season. Lawn calendars for different turf grasses with mowing, fertilizing, herbicides, insect control, patch removal, and other things are uh, recommendations are in that calendar. And information on presentations given by UNL staff and publications are also at this site. Master Gardeners are a great part of the volunteer network we have information about becoming a UNL Master Gardener and resources for Master Gardeners is available also on this site, mastergardener.unl.edu. Acreage Insights, topics of interest for those living on acreages with videos and how-tos, 
There's a great newsletter that comes out each month that kind of gives some of the latest things you should do and the things you should be doing to prepare for the next season and so forth. Great resources for animals as well. Water.unl.edu uh, provides research data to Nebraska's most important resource, that of water. Work with Nebraska's public water suppliers and customers, as well as families with private wells to help them manage their water systems and use water for indoor and outdoor needs wisely, especially during drought conditions. Research and education is available to help producers and commercial service providers such as lawn care companies and pesticide companies, as well as hometown homeowners that, in protecting the quality of our state's water resources. They um, have efforts in wise manure management, sewage treatment, nutrient management, pesticide use, and many other things. And then there's, of course, the uh, irrigation. Nebraska has a lot of irrigation sitting on a great aquifer. Um, we continually are doing research and education to help producers grow more crop for the drop, or in other words, to be as efficient as possible with irrigation water. Extension has always been about rural communities and now has an action team that focuses on hands-on educational processes that help members of communities be innovative in their plans to be sustainable in the future. Here are the Entrepreneurship Action Team's three signature programs, ECAP, ESI and Beyond, Business Ventures and Innovation. We also are very much connected with the Angler Agribusiness Program for students at the University of Nebraska. Note eship.unl.edu as our website. Entrepreneurial Communities Activation Process is a statewide research project with communities to help the community learn their strengths and to capitalize on strengths, thus making improvements to other characteristics that will help make their community sustainable. ECAP is a holistic approach. ECAP helps communities understand unique characteristics, community assets, and potential opportunities for growth. Extension is one of the three tiers of the University of Nebraska, bringing application of the teaching and research that the University of Nebraska does for residents of the state. When we bring individuals, businesses, and community organizations together to create change, we have a dynamic focused task as an eShift team that's helping communities learn to help themselves be sustainable. ECAP evolves around eight community characteristics that research has shown are important to a sustainable, successful community. Several social media tools are used to share research and entrepreneurial tools. Huskerpreneur.com is our blog. And Twitter is that constant social media tool to reach out to a variety of entrepreneurs and resource providers. ESI and Beyond is a comprehensive plan to help youth develop their entrepreneurial skills and find their business niches and to help communities support and encourage their young entrepreneurs. This series of youth curriculums is centered around building the next generation of business leaders beginning at age 10. ESI investigation, entrepreneurship investigation, is an exciting, interactive, and comprehensive curriculum project designed for youth, youth ages 10 to 19. Over 10,000 manuals have been distributed across the United States. One of the popular offshoots of ESI is the ESI camp. Leap into Careers is a learning educational action plan curriculum that was developed to help youth understand various career opportunities in Nebraska and career education fields and clusters. School standards are included in this curriculum. Community Connections is a guide to help communities encourage youth who are learning about entrepreneurship in their communities. Young entrepreneurs talked of needing encouragement and respect from adults in their communities, as well as needing community members to support them by being their customers. Every one of the entrepreneurial youth told us they'd like to stay in their home community to build their business. So this guide is designed to help communities understand that. Business Ventures and Innovation, BVI. The BVI signature outcome focus is creativity and feasibility programs aimed at increasing the number and quality of entrepreneurial opportunities that turn into sustainable agribusiness entrepreneurships. 
DDI team members deliver workshops and seminars. They provide one-to-one -one coaching and collaborate with other university and extension business support services, such as food science and technology, to assist businesses as they move through the various business creation stages. The Angler Agribusiness Entrepreneurship Program at the university is aimed to support and encourage entrepreneurship among UNL students. It facilitates entrepreneurship potential through lots of different things, including courses that lead to a minor, lectureship series, entrepreneurship training camps, internship placement assistance, and student travel. It will also help create a venture capital fund to support student startup businesses. And this team actually focuses on helping producers conduct on-farm research that then leads them to learn and make decisions that will provide them with increased yields, lower inputs, and profitable sales of their projects. CropWatch.unl.edu is a full access website providing crop producers across the state valuable and timely information to make decisions by. By looking at the CropWatch.unl.edu website, visitors will find links to any information they wish on the left-hand side of that screen. A second resource that this past year has really become a, a very national or at least a Midwest resource is our own UNL's Drought Resources, found at droughtresources.unl.edu. It's a nationally recognized source of education and resource assistance as the Midwest suffers from drought. Social media such as follow at UNL Crop Watch on Twitter provides immediate response by extension educators visiting producers in the field. By taking videos or pictures that can be uploaded as links to Twitter, producers can keep up to date with the latest concerns and thresholds of insects and diseases in their crops. Krista, I believe that's it on the video. Yep, looks like it. Okay. Um, hand control back over to you. Should be able to share your screen again. There you go. Yep, see your website. Yep. Okay. Well, good morning, everyone. My name is Angela Apps, and I am an extension educator just like Carol uh, with UNL. And today we're going to be looking at some of the uh, topics in early childhood as well as school age kids with some of our programs that we offer through the university. And one of them that you have, can see here on the website is with early childhood. And it is focused on the learning child is the kind of the, the name um, that highlights this area. A couple of the resources that are on this website that are very helpful and could be excellent programming opportunities would be the pyramid model, which is for social and emotional development um, for young children. And so this would be a training modules that would be available for uh, staff to come out and teach within your local community. Another resource that parents can download and use for themselves happens to be the parenting app, which is You Are Parent. And it has a wealth of information there for parents on ages and stages of their child's development, as well as parenting resources that they might be able to use um, with different topics relating to that first year of life. Um, the plan on this app, I know, is starting to work on expanding it to up to age five and hopefully even up to age eight. So there, this is a continuous process right here with you, our parent. Um, another piece that is available out there for parents as well as child care providers happens to be the just-in-time parenting. Um, this has some information here that really uh, focuses in on some of the you, our parent app pieces, but other things that parents can have an email sent to them once a month uh, that gives information on the development of their child, as well as other research articles. And this is from eExtension that Carol mentioned earlier. Um, the other one I want to show you, if you know of any school teachers, and I know the season for school is almost over, but this would be a great one for teachers, is text for teachers. And I know I get this ever so often, a text that's sent to my phone. And it has helpful research-based information for teachers to use within their classroom. It is focused on kids from age 0 to 8, so it does focus on the early uh, life of a child, but very good resources to help out teachers during that process. 
Uh, there are a couple other websites and things that you might want to think about, and I uh, wasn't able to find them on this page, but one resource would be Building Better Kids, and that is a Facebook page that has lots of information uh, for you to follow on Facebook as well as on Twitter uh, for parents and child care providers. A lot of the same information that's here on the website is basically sent on Facebook as well. And then there also happens to be co-parenting for successful kids. They have an online version of this training as well as face-to-face. -face. And so this would be another resource out there for parents to look for um, as another opportunity. I know it's focused on divorce, but there are some resources here that focuses for anybody or for any child at that age for parenting, since that is an area that a lot of um, families need. There's also, I don't know if Carol's, Carol hasn't mentioned it yet, but UNL website has publications, and there are several publications focused in on the family as well that has a lot of different topics. And some of the topics I've seen happen to go with bullying in schools, uh, to anything to volunteerism. There's lots of different topics out there, and they are there for families to use as well. One of the other areas when we talk about youth, it happens to be probably the 4-H Youth Development Program, and this is probably the program that we're most recognized for here in Nebraska as well as across the United States and Extension. But 4-H is a community of young people, and they happen to be about ages 5 to 18 across America, and one of the national goals happens to be that they're learning about leadership, citizenship, and then also life skills. Um, youth can be involved in 4-H programs in many different ways. Uh, they may be in a club experience, an after-school program, school enrichment, which would be staff visiting the, the school that the child is attending in the classroom, uh, camps and conferences that are held at the state level as well as county and district level as well. And then also there, happen, there might be a specialty program that might be out there or uh, the kid might be interested in joining in on that too. So there's a lot of different ways that kids are able to participate in the program. Uh, Nebraska, uh, one of their uh, numbers or accomplishments, one in three age eligible youth across all of our 93 counties in 4-H, or I should say across the Nebraska, are involved in 4-H in some form, either the camps and the conferences or even the school enrichment. And this last year it equal to about 140,000 kids. Um, involved in youth development programs from the university. Um, for youth in traditional 4-H, there's over 150 projects for them to pick from. Um, and of course, a lot of that is under your Pick the Project, which is on this website. And there's lots of information here and things to do for those families to look up information on project areas. And I know uh, we just heard from Dennis on that e that entrepreneurship piece, that curriculum piece, is, can be found on this website right here, as well as other areas that might be of interest to that child. Um, there are five different core areas that 4-H and youth development is focusing in on in the state. Uh, there, one big area is science. Uh, we want to increase our number of scientists in the future, and so one thing that 4-H is doing is working on science activities, and one of the highlights would be probably robotics or even just doing some simple science experiments based off of, I know there's kids outside, out there dissecting eyeballs um, and learning how that all operates um, as well. So there's a lot of research going out there that the youth are doing in uh, our programs with science. Um, ag literacy is another core area uh, where we're teaching youth about agriculture and where their food comes from. So that is another place where we want to make sure that our youth are aware that Nebraska is, uh, business-wise, is very predominantly in egg, and so we want them to be aware of where their food is, where their food is at. Uh, career development, I think, uh, I know that uh, Dennis showed you some pieces of the career curriculum that's out there. There's also another career website as well that focuses it on for children learning about different opportunities. Maybe their 4-H project that they take helps them determine a college uh, profession and then maybe even lead to a future job. So that just gives them an opportunity to practice those skills as a youth, decide to go in and train in that area for college, and then pick a career out of that. 
Um, another area of citizenship and leadership where youth are learning how to be responsible citizens. And so, of course, our theme this year is Join the Revolution of Responsibility, which hits right into the citizenship and leadership uh, part of 4-H. And then the last core area that the youth are involved in are healthy, it happens to be healthy living, where they are learning skills on um, research information on uh, nutrition to healthy uh, behaviors rather than at-risk behaviors, um, how to decrease those as well as looking at exercise as another opportunity. So there's lots of resources out there that youth are focused in on in those five areas. Also, one other thing that we deal with with 4-H and youth development are finding volunteers. And so volunteerism is a very big piece of our 4-H program. Um, and so the more volunteers we have, the stronger our program is in our local communities as well as our counties. And so this is probably that piece right here where we are looking for volunteers. And so there's lots of resources here to help uh, volunteers feel comfortable in working with youth development um, opportunities. Some of the curriculum, just so you guys are aware, there's a wealth of curriculum on our website. And I'll just kind of push here to show you that um, which will go, uh, that there are several different areas that you might want to think about um, that might be an excellent opportunity to do a class or a workshop at your library on some of the different topics here. This is in the Nebraska 4-H curriculum. There's also a national curriculum as well that we have access to from the National 4-H um, Center that has other resources out there for kids. Um, there's also online webinars for, vamp for families and volunteers. Um, I know there's one that's going to be happening that's actually in the process right now of giving your best, which is basically for volunteers, um, as well as some older youth audiences on uh, how they can volunteer back or give back to their local community. Uh, in the, I know that there in the past has been what's called winter warm-up, which is a opportunity for kind of like a judge's training uh, for anybody who's not familiar with the new project area or project area that we're best known for um, would probably be cows and cooking. Um, but sometimes we also need the latest technology updates in those four areas as well. The youth also have opportunities to be involved with camps and comp conferences. And the big one that's coming up very soon um, in the month of June, which is actually on UNL's campus, is called uh, the 2013 Big Red Summer Academic Camps. And so you can see listed there these are the courses that the kids would be taking. Um, they focus in that whole time in June on that particular topic. Um, so it's a wonderful in-depth kind of career college classes a little bit as well on what's going on um, on campus too. Uh, there's big, the, the uh, Nebraska 4-H summer camp right here. There's two sites um, currently right now in the state of Nebraska. And so there's lots of different campsites and opportunities for the youth to participate in. And as you can see, there is a camp brochure there that you can download to look at the different camp opportunities out at um, the different sites across Nebraska. There's two main ones this year um, with camp opportunities for kids. And then not only that from the state level, but there's lots of camps going on or different events during the whole year that are opportunities for youth to learn. Um, that might be from doing some simple classes, maybe on learning on uh, how fabric is made. Could be to how the digestious, digestion system of a cow happens. Uh, I know they've got the mobile, beef, the mobile beef tech lab, and kids can actually put their hands inside the stomach of a cow and pull out and see what does that look like. Um, so there's lots of research, lots of opportunities during the year for our families. Not only that, but we can also go into social media and mobile apps. And like I said, Facebook and Twitter, as you can see, Nebraska 4-H is on those uh, social media opportunities. We also have apps out there. There's the Career Explorer app with a website that helps kids make career decisions. Uh, Snack Planet might be an app that you might be interested in learning. Uh, some nutrition as well as some exercise. I know when you finish your little activity on your iPad, 
or your Android phone, then you're, during the break you're supposed to do several different forms of exercise. So it shows kids the tie-in of choosing healthy foods and exercise as well. And then, of course, there's the Grow It, Know It app, which is showing uh, kids some of the different products, knowing where they come from and how it fits into Nebraska Ag. Uh, and then we do have a State Fair app, which some of you may have seen before, which uh, the State Fair here has our uh, schedule and dates here. But there is a, an app out there that will show you results from State Fair, as well as some of the different events that are going on, 4-H information, so that we're able to keep uh, families updated that are not able to be at State Fair during that time. You can still look up that information and see how those kids from your county or your town are doing. So I'm going to uh, turn this over to Carol. If you have questions about any of the stuff that we have shared so far, please uh, share or type in and we will get them answered. Thank you, Angela. We have one more area to cover, and I'm excited that I get to be the one to cover it, so let's move on to that. It's food. How many of you like food? Well, I like food too, but it's not only food, it's nutrition and health. And that's at food.unl.edu. And you can see the site here. Um, there's a blog on the site, and there's a numerous nutrition blogs that you can go to. But it has lots of information on this site um, as we work to eating healthier. Uh, it may be specific information, such as diabetes or allergies. It may be how to keep food safe or to preserve food. Um, maybe it's on Buy Fresh, Buy Local Nebraska. If you want to start a commercial food venture, you can go to the site and go on to the site that will help you with that. Um, let's take a minute and look at my favorite one, that's food safety. Most of the extension educators across Nebraska have a focus area that we work in quite often, and mine is food safety. So as we look at the food safety site, you can see that it has food storage, safe food preparation and handling, food illnesses, and education. And if we just scroll down, you can go to each one of those. Um, one of the ones that I want to highlight is this one down at the bottom called Four Day Throwaway. Um, tooting my own horn here just a little bit, it was one of the first apps developed by the University of Nebraska Extension, and we actually weren't able to do that on our campus. We team uh, did this app with Iowa State, and so Iowa State did it. And this is, happens to be the website, not the app from it. The website is pretty basic. The app has a lot of details on it. The app includes all of the microorganisms that you generally would get sick from, about them, how long it would take to get sick, what kind of sick you would get from them, and what foods would be commonly, those microorganisms would be commonly found in. Now that's a difficult way to look them up. So how you get to look them up is by the food. And you can look up the food. It will tell you how long you can keep it uh, out in the open in a refrigerator, or if you freeze it, how long it should be kept frozen. And then it says, if you were to get sick from this food, what most likely would you get sick from? So I just had to make sure that I got that little plug in there before we go on. Let's go back to food safety. And as you can see here, there's um, education for different groups. We might pick consumers and go to that and you can see some things that as you would maybe be teaching consumers you could use hand washing posters, table tents, handouts, general food safety videos you might do and one that I thought we'd click on today to just give you a little piece of what's here. It's Test Your Summer Food Safety Savvy. It was put together by one of our educators, Alice Henneman, who does great work in the area of food. I'm going to click through some of the slides here so you can just see what it's like. And then we'll come to the first question. So this is your test for today. Why do foodborne illnesses increase during the summer? Is it A, bacteria, including those that cause foodborne illnesses, tend to multiply faster when the temperatures are warm? Or B, people are cooking and eating outside more 
away from the refrigerators, thermometers, and washing facilities of the kitchen? Or is it A and B? The answer, yes, is C. It's a combination of that warm weather leaving food more in a temperature area where the microorganisms can grow and being farther away from the kitchen. So we may not store our food once it becomes a leftover correctly for enough time span. Just to show you a uh, general of what you could find on this website. Now let's say you have a food product that you're interested in maybe making it into a product that you would sell at the grocery store. And so you could come to where it says food processors and you could go and visit the food processing center pages. And here you can find out some of the more general information that you might want as you're looking into that process. And I would suggest the food processing center for anybody who has any interest in developing a food product for a sale. Now that's kind of the general gist of all the different uh, areas that we work in. And we only touch the very surface of many of those areas. Um, we have educators, specialists, and assistants who all are developing uh, programs in that area, working in that area, can do a variety of things in that area to help out if you need um, help in that area. But what I'd like to look at right now is I want to go to a few things that might give you a few other resources, kind of combining some of the things from all those different areas. The first one is Extension TV. And the website is extensiontv.unl.edu. And it has one at the top that would give us an overview of what's there. But as I scroll down, it's the most current ones that are listed here. If I scroll back up just a little bit, you can list by new, by popular, or by all. And you can work on it by categories, too. And the categories are listed up above. There's a lot of videos on a variety of things. Backyard Farmer, Market Journal, Lead Class, Pesticide Container Recycling, uh, as we scroll down, we can see tree and shrub replacement. If that was a problem from the drought, you can go there and look at that. A junk drawer robotics. Uh, robotics is becoming a major thing that uh, Angela mentioned that that 4 Hers and youth are working on through extension. Um, all sorts of, and it keeps coming up with more the farther that you scroll down. The next area I'd like to look at is the mobile apps area. And this particular one has a longer URL, but it is on the handout that you'll get. So you'll be able to go see that. The beef ones are fairly new. So you can see they're listed here. And the alfalfa one is also uh, somewhat new. There is an extension one just to locate the extension offices, if you'd like. And we can scroll down, and you can see some of those beef ones. Angela talked about the UR Parent. There's Crop Watch. I believe Dennis mentioned that one. Backyard Farmer, Market Journal, the four-day throwaway. And you can get, if you want to know what apps we're working on or have just completed, this is the place to go for that. Angela mentioned publications. This is one of the things we've been known for for years. We have great publications. This is the website that you would go to to find that out. It's IANRPubs at unl.edu. Extension is part of the Institute of Agriculture and Natural Resources at the university. And so that's what IANR stands for. And so that's where the publications are located. You can just Google University of Nebraska Extension Pubs, and this comes up at the top of that Google search. If we want to go down, we can search by a variety of different things. How I like to do it is in the publications. And as you can see, there's a whole range of publications listed here. In our office right now, people are interested in things outside like insects and pests, lawns and gardens, 
um, and some other things, weeds, wildlife management. Uh, at my house, we just got a gopher the other day, uh, so they are out and they are moving. So as you can see, you now have a lot of resources available for you. And we stopped here at the slideshow and we'll go on. This is who we are, just so you know who talked today. Um, my advice for you is if you're interested in working with us beyond just looking at our website, which we would love to do that with you, is to find out who your local extension person is and your local county office. And their focus, like mine is food safety, may not be the one you're interested in, but they may be able to share a resource with you or let you know of a person close in the area who could help you with that particular area. So we partner, just as you partner, with others in the community, and we would love to partner with you. Now we'd like to give you a few ideas of some ways that we've partnered with our local library. And I see that they're online now. So Dave, if you want to type in a few more as we talk through, we would love to have you do that. Um, Dennis, before, since he doesn't get to talk, has partnered a lot with some technology things with computer training with his library in the past. Some of the areas that we've worked with our local library include parenting classes that I know Angela worked with our library on, uh, robotics, that's an area that I know Angela has done some things in. Quite a few of us have worked with our local library as we did a local garden and helping the people who are working with that garden learn about gardening. We had another educator who works out of our office, Keith Jarvie, He's an entomologist. Talk about insects with the gardening. Angela worked with youth and the gardening. Um, we had another staff member, Brenda, who talked about eating out of the garden and how to cook healthy. Uh, I know I talked about food preservation and the things that you grow in your garden. Angela also worked with summer reading programs with the library. Um, she works with youth, and she's done the National Science Experiment, which Angela is at a yearly. Every year they have a new science experiment, usually in the month of October. And so this last year it was on um, robotics a little bit, where the children made a simple robot out of a toothbrush, and they learned how to clean up a landfill, and how important it is to be very conscious of our environment and uh, not to have landfill or not say landfill, but spills happen um, on our beaches and, and everything. So it kind of showed them the importance of keeping, how important it is to clean it up and such. We've done Power of Wind, which was a wind technology piece, and we've also done one where we tested a little bit of starches and how kind of like the biofuels as well as the ethanol and the, the biodiesels, and so the kids were able to kind of explore what type of research is going on um, the scientists would do in order to come up with that research. They never made any gasoline or diesel. It just showed them the process of how much um, the balloons would blow up with the different gases from those different products. All right. And then I know you've done some uh, school out day, doing some experiences with you also. Right. When the kids were out of school for the day, we offered a program at the library um, with basically kind of themed, but then also following some educational resources for the kids. I know one of the favorites was when it was October and we did kind of a Halloween party, but then also threw in the importance of calcium and teeth and bones, and then they learned some of the different bones, um, did some fun little games, did a science experiment where we did um, the boo bubbles, where the kids learned about bubbles, but they were able to see the dry ice gas inside the bubble, and so it kind of gave them a chance to talk about science, some educational stuff, but then also tie into some of your uh, fun themed parties. And I know one option for libraries, if they have a place, a meeting place, might be to host a traditional 4-H club as they hold their meetings. Um, we want the library, I know in our community, to be a community resource just as you want your library to be. and. We have a lot of children going to our library locally, and so it's a great place for a traditional 4-H club to be at. Now, we've also, our library has an opportunity to put displays up, and we put a number of displays up 
uh, promoting different things that we've done or things with libraries or just topics that are of interest to people that we have some expertise on, mm -hmm. uh, either advertising an event or uh, giving some knowledge um, for the public to see as they go past that display. So we like you want to help better our communities and we hope we've given you a slice or a little piece of how extension can work with you and kinds of the kinds of things that we are focusing on and working to better our communities with. If you do have any questions, please, please uh, type in the chat box or on the handout it does give both um, or all three of our email addresses that you could contact us on. Or if you would like to call us on that handout also as a way to get on the web and find out the phone numbers of our local extension office here or your local extension office where you work. Ashley, any parting thoughts? Oh, Carol. Hi. Carol, this is Krista. Yes. Hi, Carol. Um, yeah, Dave Mixdorf from South Sioux City uh, Public Library is on the line, and I'm going to unmute him now. Um, he said he's got some. Uh, must have shared some of the things that he has had um, extension come into their library for. Um, I'm going to unmute now, Dave, so you can go ahead. You're unmuted, okay, Dave. Okay, can you hear me? Yes, we can. Can you hear me? Yes, okay. we can. Yep, yeah, right. extension has been, okay, extension has been a godsend for us here. I mean, we utilize them a lot. We utilize the website. We get a lot of our information for all our specialized programs that we do. Boy, I, I don't know what we wouldn't do without having the extension around our area. So if you have access to it, I highly recommend incorporating them into your program. I see you mentioned first when you, you typed in uh, some things about, they did robotics, some canning classes, uh, and you actually did yeah. host 4-H club, I guess it said? There, there are so many different things that we've done. I mean, I, you can't even keep them in track in your head. When we first started our community gardens here in, in town, you know, we were working predominantly with Hispanic population and trying to teach them actually how to garden here in the Midwest, how to do that. Well, then the next step was what do you do with all that stuff? And we actually had cooperation between Dakota County Extension and Woodbury County Extension, they came in and did a canning workshop. And I believe everybody that was at that workshop was Spanish. And so taught them actually how to be able to preserve stuff. Just something like that. Every garden class, our seed savers group, we utilize the extension materials. Um, I can't tell you how many times I've gone to the websites, looked up information, passed out. When we have questions come in, and ask us at times. We either, if we can't find the answer, we direct them down there. Keith is coming in this next month and doing a program for the community garden group on good bug, bad bugs in your garden. Um, Angela, in fact, I think we have a second desk for her somewhere in the library. She's here so much. So I just, I just can't emphasize what you can do with your extension. I mean, it's just incredible. Yeah, great. It does sound like there are tons We really appreciate it. <laughs> yeah, it does seem like there's just anything and everything you could possibly get um, brought into your library. Um, thanks, Dave. Uh, we do have one question, actual question from the audience. Um, uh, Kara Mayer from uh, Plattsmouth Public Library was wondering, um, and I don't know if it was mentioned earlier, I may have said, is there any sort of a charge for this for the libraries to bring you guys in for mileage or anything to have a program brought into the library? That would, you would need to talk to the specific person that you are bringing in. Sometimes that would depend on the program that you're doing. Some programs um, are easy to do. There's no cost involved in them. Some of the other programs, Angela was doing some things with youth and she needed supplies and maybe that would be a cost. It may also depend on how far away, if you're bringing a person in, how far away they have to drive if they would charge you mileage or not. So it would be specific to whatever you're doing. So I would definitely contact your local extension office and 
tell them you saw this webinar and maybe one of the areas that you might be interested in and ask them specifically. Okay, great. Thanks. And a lot of the online webinars that are on the UNL website, they might even be a great spot to host at your local library. Um, so that there, some of them have some costs associated. I know some of the Master Gardener classes had a little bit of money, but I think as to hooking up, I think you'd be able to, to be able to access it fairly easy. Right. That'd be another opportunity too. Is just to be a host site for those online webinars. Yeah, that's a good idea. Bring in people from the community all together to watch something that's being broadcast. Okay, anybody have any other questions or comments, uh, thoughts, anything you want to ask of Carol or Angela um, or Dave since he is here with us? Uh, nothing came in while we were chatting at the moment. Um, there was a, a lot of information on your sites and everything, and as I said, um, as most of the web pages and sites you're mentioning, I got into our delicious account as we're talk as you're talking about them, Carol and Angela. So hopefully, um, a couple of them, if not, obviously, just exploring the extension website is a good way to find all of those things as well. Um, I do have the part the PDF already uploaded to the commission slide share account, so that'll be available um, after the show. Nobody looks like nobody's got any last minute questions coming in. Um, but you guys, as you know, you can contact Carol, Angela, and Dennis with, um, with their contact information is here or with calling on the Extension website. Any anything else you guys uh, want to share? Last minute uh, before we wrap up for this morning. Last minute comments. We're excited to be able to share what we do with you, and we hope that we'll be able to work with many of you in the future. I hope so too, yeah. Um, I hope a lot more people watch the recording of our show here and get um, to use some of your resources. Uh, oh, we do have a co comment from uh, Laura Hess, who's our, our librarian from Stanton Public Library. She loves the Extension Office, has been a 4-H leader herself, and belonged to an Extension Club, and a Master Gardener. Awesome. <laughs> Uh, my mom, my mom back in New York is involved in the Master Gardener program there as well through our uh, cooperative extension offices in New York. <laughs> so I do know a lot about that part of the program. <laughs> Thank you very much. Yeah, okay. All right, well, since it doesn't look like there's any urgent last-minute questions coming in, I think we can um, wrap up the presentation of this morning. Thank you very much, Carol and Angela and Dennis, too. <laughs> um, the show has been recorded, and we will um, post it up as soon as we can. As soon as we get off the line here, it will be processed. I'm going to pull back control here to my screen. Okay. Okay, thank you very much, um, everyone, for attending. Uh, and um, this was today's show on uh, University of Nebraska in your neighborhood in the UNL Extension Office. Um, I hope you'll join us next week when our Encompass Live episode uh, topic will be library planning, a customized program for success. Um, Laura Johnson, the Continuing Education Coordinator here at the Library Commission, has been working with our Regional Library System Directors, uh, Eric Green, Denise Harder, Sharon Osenga, and our newest one, Sarah Warnicke, to put together some um, resources and videos and documents to help you do uh, planning in your library, strategic planning, technology planning, anything like that. So they will be on the show together um, next week to talk about um, library planning. So hopefully you'll sign, hope you'll sign up for that. Um, also, if you, um, Encompass Live is on Facebook, so if you are a Facebook user, please um, do Follow us on Facebook. We have a page here. Whenever we have shows coming up, we will announce them on Facebook. Um, share when we have our um, recordings are available. Any other links and things that we find of interest, um, pages that we like, you can all find them here through our Facebook page. If you are a big Facebook user, please do um, follow us there. Um, and if you're interested in any other, in other um, continuing education opportunities, I just want to remind everyone of our Nebraska Learns 2.0 program. This is where we share, each month we share something that you can learn, a, a tool, a product, something online um, that you can learn about it. Um, this month we are, scroll down a bit here, talking about actually use, choosing your own topic to talk about, the Webby Awards for in um, websites um, that are um, out there, uh, they, they are um, 
pick websites and doc tools and resources to give awards to and you can go there and see um, pick some of them to explore and tell us about we also do our book thing every month where you can read a book and earn continuing education credits credits for reporting back on that book this month is confessions of a public speaker which if you're interested in presenting yourself as Carol and Angela um, and, and Dennis did this morning um, might be useful to you uh, so definitely um, explore our Nebraska 2.0 page if you're if you are a Nebraska library looking for more continuing education credits you can get them there and if you're not from Nebraska library you can just follow along and see the things that we do so uh, that will wrap it up for this morning thank you very much everyone for attending thank you Carol Angela and Dennis and hopefully we'll see you next time on Encompass Live so long <laughs>